Why is measurement uncertainty important? Why do we need to know how to estimate measurement uncertainty? Let us look at an example and let us look at an example of determination of a pesticide, thiabendazole, in citrus fruits. And suppose we have two laboratories who have made the analysis. And one of those laboratories has obtained the result for a particular lot of some citrus fruits, has obtained the result of 4.2 milligrams per kilogram. And we have here an axis of concentration and we mark, can mark this 4.2 here on this axis. So, now suppose the other laboratory has got somewhat higher result. And the result of the other laboratory is 4.7 milligrams per kilogram. What can we say about these results? Are they in agreement or are they in disagreement? Well, at first sight we could say that, no, well, of course they are in disagreement, they are strongly different, there's no question about that. But, in reality, pesticide determination in food at low levels is a difficult analytical task. And it is very difficult to do it in such a way that the results will be very, very accurate. Therefore, these results actually have high uncertainties. These uncertainties can be several tens of percent of those values themselves. So that if we put realistic uncertainty estimates on these values, we can see a completely different picture. Let us do that. Both of these measurement results are now characterized by uncertainty of roughly plus minus 0.6 milligrams per kilogram. And we see that actually the true value according to this laboratory's measurement can be anywhere within this range, including here. And the true value according to this laboratory's result can be anywhere within this range, including here. Therefore, we have actually no reason to say that the results are different. In fact, the results agree very well. So, in order to compare two measurement results, we need to know their uncertainties. Now, why do people carry out pesticide determination in food? They carry these analytical determinations out because they want to know whether we can eat the food or not. So, in order to say whether this thiabendazole concentration in citrus fruit is okay or not, we need to know the maximum permissible limit or maximum residue limit of thiabendazole. And this limit in the European Union is 5 milligrams per kilogram. So, here comes this maximum residue limit. And if we now look at these results, we can see that although the results themselves are below 5 milligrams per kilogram, there is also some probability that the true value is above there. Probably the true content of pesticide in the citrus fruit is below 5 milligrams per kilogram but we cannot be completely sure in this. And the decision remains with the respective food authority as to whether this fruit could still be sold or not. So, we see that measurement uncertainty 
is first of all an important quality characteristic of the measurement result. And secondly, it also is necessary for comparing results. And this has been recognized by different authorities. And in fact, nowadays, one of the requirements if a laboratory wants to accredit its management system is the ability to be able to estimate measurement uncertainty for the results of chemical analysis and measurements that the laboratory makes. So that the measurement uncertainty estimation ability is also required from the laboratories by authorities.